fall is a great time to put in some of your new beds for next spring. But have you looked at what you're using and whether or not you should use it? For example, this compost bin is made out of wood. Does it matter if it's treated or not? Some people have tire gardens. Others have plastic solid tub gardens, metal gardens, old bathtubs, you name it. That's what we're gonna talk about here today. What to make your beds out of safely without causing any harm to you or your plants or the environment. I am usually someone that throws caution to the wind. I am notorious for using products, recycled material that is available to me to make my beds out of. It doesn't matter what the material is or how long it's suspected to last. I've tried it. We're talking tires and everything, but there are some cautions you may wanna take when you choose the material you're going with. So number one is wood. Should you be using pressure treated wood or should you be staying on the untreated hardwood route? Hardwood that is untreated is so expensive. Particularly when we're talking about getting thick freaking boards, she's gonna break the bank and she's gonna break the bank fast. So treated wood is an option. Now, when it comes to treated wood, you're probably like, Ashley, they use chemicals to do this. What the heck? And you are correct. They use ACQ, which is copper and biocides combined in one. Now these biocides are DDTC, which is actually used in the restaurant and the medical world for the biocide. Now biocide is just referencing a biological killer. <laughs> Uh, that takes out everything. Copper, as we know, is a micronutrient, but it also is used in high doses to treat issues within plants. It's a great disease control. Now, can you use it in a garden? Does it leach? Yes, it does leach, but it doesn't leach much. And more specifically, anything that I have read is looking at lumber under conditions that are even more intense uh, in regards to decomposition or forcing leaching, none of which reach any sort of problem level in your soil system. Now, even if it did leach, the edges of your soil are going to have the most. If you have an organic soil or a soil high in organic material or a soil that's heavy in clay, like a clay loam, it's even less so how much it's going to penetrate into the centers of the bed. So ultimately speaking, I am pretty darn comfortable with telling you guys to use treated wood. I've used them in the past because I was broke when I first started gardening at this house 10 years ago. And I use treated wood and those beds are still alive to this day. And the copper and the biocide don't actually cause any issues to you or the plant. Okay, next one is tires. I've done this one as well. I've done this one because I've had access to a lot of farm tractor tires, which are ginormous and very easy ways to make garden beds. I'm gonna just lay it on you thick here, straight up, do not do it. I've done it, but that means absolutely nothing. It has, it has, it has stuff and that stuff leaches and that stuff leaches so much it actually ends up in groundwater, which is why it's treated pretty much like a biohazard now when you have rubber, you have to, you literally have to pay a disposal fee. Yeah, it's because things like lead and petrochemicals all around tend to get leached into the soil and into the water. Normally would say that if you're not growing food and you have some sort of issue being leached into the soil, then you can go ahead and put in ornamentals. But in this case, I'm going to even advise against that. And again, it comes down to the arsenic and the lead and the the petrochemicals just overall that get released into the system and that system whether you are an environmental junkie or you just want to preserve your own health the system is your guard and so you're probably thinking i don't care if i poison mother nature because that's just the way some people roll which is cool but but you are going to poison yourself because it's going to leach out into the surrounding area so rubbers tires stay away from okay so the next one is actually bricks this one i've researched and it's just i have hasn't set right with me as to whether or not you should use it so this one i've also used i use it in my front bed which is a perennial bed and i use it in my back bed which is also a perennial bed i don't grow vegetables in these now i don't know necessarily if this is like an absolute you should follow this hard and fast in regards to vegetables. But what I will say is that bricks themselves, the, the actual brick itself, is not dangerous in the sense that it's leaching out, you know, metals or anything crazy like that. But it does 
have slag in it. And slag is a non-metallic, but it still does contain things like silicone dioxide, manganese and chromium, I believe it is. Anyways, these are, I mean, two of those are, well, I mean, you could argue that a 17 central nutrients once again, but what I will say is that it is considered caustic as well. Now I'm not in the world of manufacturing brick and I have looked high and low as to whether or not your brick you use at home has caustic slag in it or more specifically this EAC slag. If there's anyone out there that works in the world of bricks and knows the answer to this, please comment down below. I personally, I've just never used it in a vegetable garden. I honestly have no idea if it's dangerous or not. I stay on the, the safe side because of the word caustic. So keep that in mind. Okay, next up is old furniture, more specifically dressers. I've seen these over and over and over again. And the older dressers out there do have formaldehyde in them. I don't know if it's part of the preservation process or a part of like the, the finish on the actual dresser itself. That I'm not familiar with the reason for why, but from what I've read is old dressers do contain formaldehyde. Now, is this of concern to you? I mean, it could be. It's just something to keep in mind if you are going the route of old dressers. Next up is tubs, specifically plastic. So you guys know I use Salt Lake tubs. I use five gallon pail buckets. I use plastic quite thoroughly, uh, despite the video I did on plastic. <laughs> that indicates to words not, not doing it. What I will say is technically speaking, if it is a food safe number, it can be used in the world of gardening. Now, do I think that's going to change? Yes, yes I do. Because a lot of research is showing things like microplastics and all that fun stuff. Watch this video here, it really goes into depth on that. So that one you may want to use caution with just because of the, if you're, if you're particularly worried for edible foods, that one I'd be, I'd be careful with. And even if you're using it and you're um, using a food safe one, keep in mind things that have been weathered or exposed to high weathering or showing signs of weathering, scratches, cracks. These ones I would stay away from because that is more likely to release uh, harmful chemicals into food because plants do uptake all of this. Okay, last up is metal. Metal can come in so many different forms. I've seen metal tubs. I've seen video containers out the hoo-ha, mostly because that's what's in my yard. And ultimately speaking, metal can contain zinc and it can contain lead. This is not of concern if you were buying your garden beds from a reputable company. If the company is willing to share the makeup of the bed, and more specifically when it comes to these actual metal beds, what the paint or the uh, covering is on the product. If it says that it is FDA certified, it is considered food safe, it has all the stamps, checks, whatever, Vigo has the stamps, checks, etc. you're okay. What worries me is stuff that's not regulated and is coming from overseas, which is possible. One of which, actually these beds back here, I had thought about this afterwards, um, after I'd set these up and I, I did email the company asking if they had like any FDA certifications or kind of what the coatings were, et cetera and so forth. They said that it was food safe, um, but they don't have like anything official documentation wise to show that. I don't know what that means, but to me, it definitely has put a perspective on um, what I need to maybe maybe watch out for in future cases because metals are harmful to both plants and humans in high levels. Now, there are a number of other ones such as bags and um, nylon and all that sort of stuff. And those do technically usually fall so long as they're not hemp material under the world of plastic. Cause I do know that those will come up in conversation. If you're doing ornamental plants, you can usually throw caution into the wind and get a little bit creative with everything you're doing. When you're doing something that you're eating, particularly root veg, you do want to use some caution. If you have a clay soil, it's more likely to hold on to a lot of these products in a sandier soil. So your soil texture does play into this. Your environment, how much heat or humidity 
you have also plays into this. The amount of weathering this stuff is exposed to plays into it. So is it a hard and fast yes or no answer for a lot of these? No, but what I will say is I encourage you heavily to do some research on what you're choosing to use in your garden. What I can say with confidence is Vigo metal beds and treated lumber do not bother me whatsoever and I use them religiously throughout the entire yard. That being said, if you want to learn more on how to actually physically fill the beds, you want to check out this video right here and that is what Google says you should watch next. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!